Hi everybody, it's the Soap Man. So as promised, I'm going to take those embeds from the last soap that I made, make a nice hot process batch, and suspend them in there. I've already put the color in here. This is just the oils right now. I have found that at least the ones I've used, Brambleberry Colors, can withstand the heat of the hot process cook. So, uh, and I've used these before in it, so I went ahead and put the colors in so I don't have to worry about that, that at the end. So, we're going to go ahead and put our lye in here, get a thick trace, and get this cook started. I'm going to pull you back just a little bit. So with the hot process, I generally like to get a very thick trace because when it starts to cook, it's going to try to pull apart anyway. It is going to separate, so I like to go ahead and get it nice and thick to start out with. See right now, it's already emulsified, but I really want a nice thick trace. Okay, so we're back. My idiot camera cut off, but all I was doing was uh, making this up to a thick trace. But it's getting to a point, I'm going to have to start watching it now. Never leave hot process soap unattended. I'm sitting right here beside it watching a movie. But you see there how it's starting to creep up the sides? That's a sign it's starting to cook, and i got to keep an eye on it. I don't really have to do anything right now. This is all nice and hard. It's going to be a little while, but you can see where that's starting to creep up the side. I'm going to have to really watch it now. So I will bring us back when it's ready to stir some. All right, so we're still continuing to cook. You see how it's cooking the side up there? And that actually has gone into a gel phase or starting into. Now this next step, it, some people say do it, some people say don't. I like to go ahead and try to break it up a little bit at this point. Not 100% necessary, but it is just gonna help it cook faster. So, I'm just gonna take my spatula and kind of stir it around a little bit. Cause then at this point, uh, it's going to start cooking and it's going to really take off. I have to really be careful with this. At this point I have to give this my complete attention. Put the lid back on to keep the fluid and the moisture in. Clean the sides up a little bit. All right, I'm gonna put the lid back on and bring us back in just a little while. Okay, the soap's cooking, and it's just about to enter what we call the applesauce stage, and it's going to get really angry. See how soft it is? And what's happening is everything's starting to separate. It's going to want to separate the oils and everything, but it's okay. It's, it, it just does this. So, although mine's pink because I already have the color in it, it has the look and the texture of applesauce. I'm trying to hold the camera and stir at the same time because... If it gets too hot too fast, it's going to really climb and it's going to volcano over the side of the crock pot. I've had it happen before. Not a fun experience, so this is the point you've got to give it your undivided attention. I'm going to have to sit you down for a little while. But it's not at that point yet. It's not too angry. It's behaving pretty well, so I'm going to go ahead, put the lid back on it, let it cook a little while. Just keep a very close eye on it, so we'll be back in a little bit. 
Okay, it's time to check the soap. This is without question the best behaving hot process I have ever made. I used the soap calc recipe calculator, lye calculator, and although it used the exact same amount of lye as brambleberry, it calls for more water. And I think the more water is really helping it. This is done. Now how do I know? The camera's probably not picking this up, but this has the texture of mashed potatoes and it's shiny. That means it's in a nice full gel phase and it is cooked. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull the plug. Uh, I would like to let this cool down just a little bit. So just kind of stir everything up, but it's done. It's nice and shiny. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out of the crock. Sit it on the counter, let it cool for just a few minutes. Then I'm going to go ahead and put my scent oil in. And then I'll put the embeds in put it in the mold and it'll be ready. See you in a little while. Okay, we're back. It's time to stir the scent oil in, the fragrance oil in. So this is, I put the crock back in the base just to help me hold on to it, but it's cooled down enough. I feel comfortable. This takes a little while. It's not quite as easy as putting it in a fluid batter. I like to put it in just a little at a time and take my time stirring it in. Your soap will eventually absorb it. This is holding up very nicely. I'm definitely going to use the extra water next time I make a batch, which will probably be next week. And by the way, this particular batch cooked about 35 minutes. I cooked it on high. If you've not done it, you may want to do it on low. It's kind of going to—it's going to depend on your experience and your crock pot. But I have used this crock pot for years. I know it well. I know how it behaves, although the soap behaved way better than it normally does. Do you do have to really stir this well to make sure that the soap has completely absorbed it all and you don't have loose pockets because it may start to float to the top. Get this last little bit in and stir. Okay, it does appear to be pretty well mixed in, so let's put our embeds in. I'm doing this last because these are still soft. These were the ones I put into the muffin mold that I had left over, chopped them up. Just want to stir this really well and make sure that they're all completely coated and do the best you can to mix them around. sure if I had too many or not, but I think this will work. Okay, this is ready to go into the mold because it's going to start to set up on me now. It's cooling down. So, let's start plopping it into the mold. Tap 
this on the floor. And that's it. Now one thing I like to do is try to get those embeds down in there if I can. Get them covered with soap. And then on the top, it's kind of up to you. I think I'm going to just leave this like it is. Yep, I am going to just leave this just like it is. Okay. All of this, not going to waste. You know me. That is not going to waste. I'm just going to go ahead and let that sit up for a while. This is our soap, our hot process soap with those embeds in it. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the refrigerator and possibly cut it tonight. If not, definitely tomorrow. So I will see you later for the cutting. Okay, so we're back and it's ready to cut the soap. This 10 inch mold that I used for the landscape soap doesn't give me enough bars. Uh, and this way, this is a good way just to kind of up the number of bars. So here we go. And I haven't made a hot process in a long time. Yeah, those are nothing spectacular, but those were the embeds I had left over that just really weren't very pretty. Wouldn't have been very good to give out. And this way, this will up the number of bars and give me what I needed. And that excess soap won't go to waste. And while technically this is soap, this is ready, I could take one and take it to the shower right now. This is soft. Um, the hot process really should sit at least a week. Technically, yeah, you can take a shower with it right now. But because this is going out with the landscape soap, this is still going to sit the full uh, four to five weeks to cure. So this is still going to go through a full cure, just like cold process soap. Like always, a small thin one for me to test it. I always test it before I give it away, but there we go. That's how I make hot process soap. And using that old soap as embeds is one of my favorite ways to do it. Alright everybody, I'll see you next week for the next landscape soap. Thanks for watching. Bye.